<laughs> Our final guest tonight, ladies and gentlemen, was once voted the third most famous intellectual in the world, raising the question of why he's here, obviously, in our ridiculous <laughs> interview of a programme, but he's here to talk to us. Well, obviously, talk about evolution, which is very much a subject he has popularised in a huge way, and also to talk to us about religion. He's on the Late Late, actually, on Friday. Could you please welcome Richard Dawkins, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Before we get to the whole big issue of God and all that, which is what you're talking about here, let's talk um, evolution. Okay. Yeah, which is why, I mean, because you wrote the book The Selfish Gene. It's why we're all here. So which well, is essentially, yeah, yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, in very many ways. But also, and, and as for a scientific theory, right, incredibly simple. Very, yeah, very, very, very like, simple. A couple of sentences, basically, yeah. isn't it? One sentence. One, you, can, you can narrow it down to one sentence. The non-random survival of randomly variate, varying codes Okay, let's, let's make it a, an easier <laughs> sentence. Let's make it a slightly punchier, more explanatory sentence than that. Yeah, okay. Um, everybody is a cousin of every animal and plant that has ever existed. We have a grand ancestor who lived four billion years ago. Nobody knows what it was like. Maybe a bit like a bacterium. Um, we're all cousins. Every creature alive and dead is a cousin of every other creature. That sounds like a chat up line in Donegal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure we're all cousins. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's quite fantastic, though, that something as incredible as the entire diversity of nature can be explained by so and such a beautifully simple theory. What's amazing is that it took so long for anybody to think of it. Yeah. I mean, I can't believe that Darwin came 200 years after Newton, because what Newton did seemed to me to be so much more difficult. But, however, it did take... 200 years longer, and it had to wait until Darwin and Wallace, because Wallace was another English naturalist who did the same thing. What was Gramsci doing at that point? <laughs> <laughs> Unavailable for <laughs> The cousin thing, by the way, of all the arguments often given against people who still resist evolution is the notion that we come from monkeys. We don't strictly come from monkeys. Uh, well, well, monkeys and we come from a common ancestor, thing. and that common ancestor would probably have been called a monkey if we looked at it. So, yes, in, in a sense, we do. But we don't, of course, come from modern monkeys. The, the problem people have is they say, well, if we come from monkeys, why are there still monkeys around? <laughs> you might as well say, well, it, well, why are there still people around in that case? I mean, it's, it, it's no more sensible. The, and the note, we, so it all branched off, branched off at this stage, a series of tiny mutations, and the ones that worked were the ones that were favoured, and they would yeah. end up, you know, yes. getting food and sex, essentially, and moving on to the next and generation. it took a very, very long time, which is why it's so hard to understand. Of course, and the other thing is, <laughs> just as a matter of interest, how many generations, right, in whatever animal, would it take for you to spot an actual difference, to begin to see oh, a trait emerge? Um, oh, you could see it very, very, in very few. I mean, it wouldn't... It, because a, a mutation, after all, is something that changes your hair colour, your eye colour. Yeah. Um, so you could see it instantly. But would you... How long would it take to see a new species emerge? I mean, that, that might be um, 10,000 years. Wasn't it spotted very quickly in the Galapagos Islands, wasn't it? Um, well, not exactly spotted, because nobody... Um, well, we, no, no, that, that, that's not true. You could say that one of the quickest... <laughs> one of the quickest pieces of evolution is in Lake Victoria. Okay. Because Lake Victoria, we know, is only 100,000 years old, which is very, very young. And there are about 450 species of cichlid fish in Lake Victoria, all evolved there during the last 100,000 years. So that, that means that there's been incredibly rapid evolution in Lake Victoria. And in like that a time. simple thing is, is a simple thing of, well, of evolution is, uh, you know, like 200 years ago, because diet wasn't as, as good as it is today, so people were genetically smaller than they are today. Well, that is a, is that a form of evolution? That's not, probably not genetic. No, but it's, that, that but would it's be a, nutritional. Yeah, and it's a uh, circumstance. It, looks, it certainly looks like, like evolution. Yes. yes. I just, as my reason, because the fact it is all to do with you basically you don't have kids uh, in, in a very simplistic sense uh, if you're competing with somebody else for them. But as humans now, we, we've got such good medical uh, medical science at this stage. People are living way past the age where they're having children, uh, much more than they ever did. Have we, as humans, particularly in the West at the moment, stopped our own evolution? Well. It's very tempting to say that. On the other hand, we don't all have equal numbers of children, and so although we all live long enough to have children, some of us have lots of children, some of us have none. I mean, if you think about it, suppose there was a genetic tendency to be incompetent at using contraceptives. Um, <laughs> there may be many people in this room today... Well, no, this is Ireland, so perhaps not, but... <laughs> there, there may be many people in this room today who are 
who owe their existence to the fact that their parents were incompetent at using contraception. <laughs> so, if there's any kind of a gene for fumbling with your fingers or something like that, <laughs> then, then we have, by definition, natural selection going on. We have evolution in favour of incompetence. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's general incompetence or specifically incompetence at using contraception, I don't know. What I suspect, however, is that it's not giving rise to interesting evolution. Because if you come back in, oh, um, in a million years, what it takes to be incompetent in a million years will be a very different kind of incompetence from what it takes to be incompetent now. And that means there hasn't been a sustained pressure for incompetence for all of those million years. Right, so, so it's, not, it's not like... You do, but do you think that if we can do... If it stayed at the level we're at now, or even in, in developed technologically, and allowing for any apocalyptic kind of visions that may have occurred in a million years, let's say, would humanity possibly be roughly the same as we are now? Uh, they could very, very well be possibly the same as we, as we are now. Much more likely, however, as we'll be extinct. Most species have gone extinct. Yes. Or we will have reverted to some kind of um, barbarism and be, be living in... in, in um... Well, that's a happy enough vision now. I'm glad I brought that. <laughs> I'm serious. There was a, an article that um, a, a guy who's just published that I was, we were discussing on another television programme uh, about a, a, an evolutionary psychologist from um, Northumberland University. Uh, who's, who's remarking, I don't know what you think about this, that we've only been around, we, we've been around as a species for like 10,000 years and we've been, we, are, we think a certain way and that we've only really had feminism or, you know, of any kind for maybe even 100 years and that women are still hardwired to behave in a certain way where they're dependent on men. Uh, do you... Yeah. This is not my findings. <laughs> I merely report. Um, do, do you... Do, does that hold any weight with you? Is that a... It might, a, a, it might a tiny bit, but I, I'm a great believer in, in culture and learning, and I find that the, that the variation between the sexes is much less than the, than the variation within the sexes. So if you've got um, an intelligent woman and an intelligent man, they have far, far more in common um, than... Um, Two randomly yeah, chosen exactly. intelligent women. So, so, um, so uh, al although there might be something in such theories, I would be aghast at anybody <coughs> trying to use that to, uh, to influence the way they actually treat members of the opposite sex. I'm sure there's plenty of mothers out there with three kids tearing off their skirts wishing that we'd evolve to have six hands or something like that to yes. six, yeah. take, take yeah. care yeah. of all them. There's them. another yeah. uh, evolutionary uh, theorist, I suppose, and before we become extinct, he had his theory and the theory, uh, the, the work was commissioned by Bravo TV, so it's bound to be true, um, <laughs> that the, the human race is split into very tall, attractive, clever people, uh, short, dumpy, stupid people. It, it, could that be possible? We're evolving into two different species. Yeah, and, and, kind of and, essentially. Yeah, like um, H I heard you talking about uh, Wells, yes, H.G. Yeah. Wells earlier. Yeah, the, the, um, the, the time, time machine. machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the going, to, going to the future. Is that a possibility? Um, it would only be a possibility if we were separated, if the two groups were separated so they couldn't interbreed for rather a long time. They'd have to be living on different islands, maybe different planets. Maybe that's the way it could happen. So if, we, if, if we send people out, out in rockets to colonise different planets so there's very little gene flow between yeah. between the planets but it is could. possible so if it's and the, the way <laughs> yeah, for us you really are you really are yeah, desperate I, I, for this to be possible aren't you so for well i, I assume I, but the it most is polite possible no no i've ever and, heard yeah. it's it's well i'm just saying it's that if it's possible and we don't want it to happen well then short dumpy men will have to have sex with tall oh, women okay, that's, yeah. where we're <laughs> that's all i'm saying sorry yeah well you, you you've got the principle that's all right. I'm saying. Yeah. yes you, got you the see right. I, I apologize. That's a sacrifice well, anyway, I'm willing to get, my friend. <laughs> I'm sorry for in, in any way impugning your scientific work here. Uh, and, Richard and, uh, Dawkins said, I'm allowed to do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> See you after the show. Well, that's the yeah. little bit <laughs> Deck, You heard that. Yeah. <laughs> the, but th this particular debate on evolution, right, which we, in this part of the world, and now should, in the, for the most part, accept as being just a fantastic scientific theory and does not free up a wonderful world of knowledge that we can do, launches you into one of the most massive philosophical debates which is taking place in the culture at the moment between yourselves and between the religious, uh, who believe that the scriptures have told them that this cannot be the case and are still fighting the battle about it. Now, this is, must be, uh, just wreck your head, I'd imagine, to a certain extent, that you're yes. still fighting this. I, I've got to be fair here. That there are plenty of religious people who do believe in evolution, and it would be um, uh, unfair not to state that up front. Um, I believe that 
evolution is incompatible with religion, but there are a hell of a lot of religious people who believe in evolution, and a hell of a lot of good scientists who are, who are religious. So it would be unfair not to state that um, at the top. Yeah, but now having said that... Having said that... <laughs> <laughs> having I mean, said that... Creationism, for God's sake. No, no, no. Creationism, that's right. I mean, cr creationism... Sorry, is, it's a rather ironic way to say it. It is, for God's sake. Yeah. <laughs> for God's sake. Yeah, there is no doubt. Cre cre creationism is complete and utter nonsense. However, not all religious people are creationists. That's the only point I was, I was making. OK, well, that's fair and, enough. And I mean, and educated theologians who actually know something are very upset about creationists because creationism gives religion a bad name. The, but it's, it's in, in America, for example, the uh, huge schools of Something like 50% of the American electorate allegedly believes that the world is less than 10,000 years old. And still flash. Yeah, but it's kind of ironic <laughs> because they, <laughs> <laughs> they actually elected a monkey. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not ironic, it's just exactly what you'd expect. <laughs> um, by the way, you know there's a, there's a museum of creationism opening up. Uh, they're looking for, if you wish to donate to it, I'm sure there's a webpage somewhere, which will give the creationist history. You know, with yeah, men walking alongside right. dinosaurs. And I bet the donations would be tax-free as well. Religion yeah. gets a free ride all the time to... to well, you were saying, donations. sorry, what you were saying before the show as well about the, um, the money being taken away from all sorts of research to go to this Mars yeah, mission? Yeah, the, the US have, um, well, they've, they've lessened their um, research funding for everything that isn't space related. They've increased their space research tenfold and, and cut everything else just because I think America wants to be the first. Because no, to land on Mars. To George yeah. wants to go into space and find God. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he's up there somewhere, looking oh. down. But Hopefully, you know, tutting he disapprovingly. Lost, he come back. That'd be okay. How did you yeah. cope with the? Um, did you get an easy ride when you were on uh, the Late Late Show? Its audience would tend to be a bit no, more the conservative. Audi the audience was um, was uh, just about all religious. I mean, the, um, Pat Kenny called for a show of hands and. and yeah. And he'd got what he described as a forest of hands. I'd have liked to have seen a show of hands the other way. I mean, it's a bit misleading, perhaps. But, and I got some fairly testing questions. I mean, they were easy enough to deal with, but there was obviously hostile intent behind them. One of them was something... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you say that, because I, I was going to ask you, uh, uh, were you looking forward to burning in hell? At least the company's better done. <laughs>